This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, so we've got a beauty salon here. It's not working right, so come back here to check out the furnace and we gotta move half the chair so we can get into it. But we need to see what's going on. They said it just came on. Everything's working now, but it hadn't been working up until just recently. Let's see if we can get this comfort junker to work. Yeah, I'm not sure why the thermostat showed warmer than the room temperature, like they turned it down. I don't know if they cranked it up and it stopped or what. Just looking at it real quickly here, it looks like the thermos, the uh, flame sensor dirty. Probably hasn't had anything cleaned in it for quite a long time. So before I go change anything, I wanna see this thing run, see whether it airs out or what it's gonna do. Before I go changing things, sometimes you fix it and you just don't know what you did. So you're better off to uh, watch it run for a while first and before you change things. Go ahead and check this flame sensor rectification, see if it's very good. So go ahead, love to be able to catch it doing whatever it's doing. That's awesome. That's you gotta love it when your whole bag flips upside down like that. That's just that's just awesome. Ain't nothing better than having that happen. Because there's no place to put anything in here. Gotta love it. All right, so what I did is I killed the furnace, pulled the flame sensor off. I've got it held in my hand here. Got one probe on the uh, flame sensor. I wanna see what I have before and after when I clean it. Kind of will tell me if I'm in the right track or not. I mean, right now it's running. Um, I don't hear anything gurgling in the drain, so it's kind of hard to say what exactly caused this problem. So uh, all you can do is go off what you know has been the multiple problems over and over again, and just try to eliminate those one by one and uh, that way you've gotten it. So as soon as this thing powers down again, we'll be able to check it and see what we get. We're at 1.8.7, so we are really, really, really low. It's, uh, that looks like crap. It should be usually three, <laughs> 2.3, three, somewhere in the ballpark, and that's, that's super low. Let's go ahead and clean that thing up. I think we're gonna know for certain that something weird's going on here. So that flame sensor's right here. Some people like to replace these, which unless they're cracked or warped, there's never a reason to replace them. Somebody just wanna sell you something, but you can see it's a little bit corroded looking. Now, Ted, old anti-HDIY, he likes to use a hundred dollar bill on these. I don't know, maybe, maybe you should grab a few hundred dollar bills and clean it. But honestly, I've always had the best luck with my wire brush, which I use a stainless steel. That doesn't hurt your fingers. It ain't gonna hurt the, the flame sensor. It doesn't leave grooves. So let's go ahead and get this thing cleaned up. Okay. Now let's recheck that and see if it looks a little better than what it was before. This is a way of knowing if you're on the right track. So, we've got it plugged back in exactly the same way we did before. Let's see if our microamp reading is a little bit better than what we had before. You ready? That's quite a difference. I mean, it didn't look that dirty, but it definitely, definitely was. And you can see that right there. So 
that's that's what was wrong with it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and clean the condensate trap anyway because they're always getting plugged up. And they said they just replaced the air filter, so anyhow, let's go ahead and get the trap out of there. on there. That looks really nice. It looks a lot better. Never can get the whole bottom very good. I went ahead and turned the power off, so it's going to run the blower now for one minute, which gives us time to get this back together before it kicks back on. Be great, be able to see what I'm doing. came off too, see that? That right there caused a problem. So that looks like, well that popped right off the other side too, but that wasn't on there with a squat. Okay, let's see if we can get that a little bit better on there. Get that on that collector box. That connects to the pressure switch. And then we gotta put a screw in there, which you gotta be really careful when you're gonna over tighten it and crack it. There we go, just like that. Now it should kick on and run just Jim Dandy. that was it could have been possibly just barely touching could have been falling off but that flame sense was majority of it if it wasn't one thing it was definitely another potential it's burning pretty clean everything looks really good and smooth ever since these nitride igniters we really haven't had any problems with any of that crap anymore it's definitely an improved furnace over what the old ones were sign because that's why those get dirty so quickly they must have used a, a cheaper metal and that tends to absorb any things that are any uh, contaminants that are floating in the air and they tend to get you know blocked up and it bakes right into them and that's what I've noticed train used to have a bunch of igniters like that that got or flame sensors like that that used to get glowing red uh, Linux never did I mean, they didn't do much of anything right towards the end there, but generally, their flame sensors were pretty reliable. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah, never mind. Scrap that. So we used to have that was majority of the problems was they were always dirty. Uh, they lasted forever. They just needed cleaned. But yeah. All right. So I just looked down below. I didn't see anything down there, so I think I got everything. 
gonna check temperature rise. Let's see what we got. Mm, looks like about 130. You figure you got 72 coming back. So that's right about 60. It's kind of close, but you gotta remember we're getting radiant heat right off this coil. Even though it's blocking some of it, you're still getting radiant heat. Uh, 130's not out of line, so I'm not too worried about it. We're looking pretty good there on that. It looks like somebody's already checked it once before because they had this all here. That's probably why it was tripped out before the uh, filter caused it to. Just a cheap one inch filter cause it to try trip limit. So all this equipment up here has been pretty well beat up by the hail. That's why they need to have hail guards on it. I don't, you can't even push that over any more than what it already is. Thought, yeah, this one has a bad, igno uh, bad ignition module, and then that one back here does too. We got filters here to bring up. Good old filter box puller. This thing makes it so much simpler. Here. Even though it sounds like a kind of dumb thing, what I'll do is I'll literally put the filters on top of the units. That way I know I've gotten to them and got them done. Kind of just makes it a little easier. This uh, unit here, like I said, needs a, a new control module and a pressure switch. The uh, L series, I haven't got a lot of these around here, which they're getting old now, not even all that fancy anymore. But originally, the belt was loose and this pressure switch had done taking a poo poo. So, that pressure switch was shutting her down and I had plenty of uh, pull on the blower to verify that there was a actual uh, blower running. So the control module has been updated because those little blue modules there were totally garbage. We had those very similar to that in the residential market. And then this is just uh, the replacement pressure switch, which it's one of those uh, Costa Rica's had several of these go bad. So we'll get that changed real quick. We're not gonna loop it too much cause you loop it too much. And I've had times where that pockets water, especially when it gets colder, really should be higher than, but since this really ain't a humongo deal, as far as any heat or anything like that and it's not such a problem if it's on a draft motor i'm like saying 80 percent or that was more of an issue back in the day so just put in the month and the year there we go all right so we got that done not real high tech here this is a direct spark ignition control basically we've got Ground, flame sense, power, and main valve. That's it. You literally got four or five wires, five wires. Go ahead and get that updated, which, like I said, this thing just had issues. There you go. Okay, so now some of these actually will say don't mount them this direction. Yeah, it doesn't have that. You gotta sometimes watch and make sure that this one doesn't have it written on there, so I'm not gonna worry too much about it. So here we go, we got ground, which is a little tight. I need to trim that up or loosen that up a touch. Those look like aftermarket wire ties. Probably was changed once before. I remember having a lot of those go bad. I think it's just had a bad, run of about everything pressure switches ignite ignition modules you name it it seemed to go bad common and grounds the same terminals there so get that in that spot basically this thing works it just is powered boom it starts sparking after a delayed trial there powers down here Well, they really give you a lot of room to get to it. Flame sense. There's that. And main valve is 
blue. And heck, even they had issues with their ignition wires. They decided to go with this carbon wire and then it ended up burning off. So yeah, they just had so many problems. I don't really miss working on their stuff. I really don't. I really don't. So we could mount it like that so you could actually probe it for voltages in case you uh, ever need to check it to see if it's getting powered or running. Get that self tapper in behind it. There we go. Oh, wonderful. Maybe. This thing had a whole Novar system originally on it, and they had to put a board in there to convert it over. So that required taking some of those wiring harnesses there out of the circuitry coming up to this and then I forget which board it was it was one of these boards but basically it converted it over so it could go normal I forget exactly so I wrote down the the things they had there it's schematic from Linux even to this day I still have issues with them they are some of the worst schematics ever so here's your spark high voltage flame no color you gotta love their, their their thought process behind this. There we go. All right, so we got that one done. Yeah, it cycled fine. Got all the filters cleaned up. They're all off the roof. And uh, we got this wired up. Just need to make sure it cycles heat and then uh, we can get out of here. See if we can get on there without shorting this out. There to there. There we go. One cool thing is they do got LEDs. Can't hardly make them out, but you can see that it is, uh, the yellow is on. All right, just came on. I'm not sure if my recording got the last bit, so it just came on, draft motor's on, blower's on. Make sure we unhook. This is definitely something that happens every now and again when you jump them, you forget to take them off, which is never a good thing. So, that should tidy this one up. On to the next call. Not sure where we're going, but I'm sure we'll get there eventually.